What's up, you guys? Want to learn six ways that you can build long-term sustainable wealth with real estate? Hi, I'm Josh Savaris from TNR Wealth Strategies. Thanks for tuning in. Real estate over time has proven to generate many millionaires and billionaires. For example, in downtown Toronto, a single detached house was going for $400,000. Flashback today, that same house is worth $1.5 million. That's a 162% increase over 10 years. And considering we had a recession just around a little bit after 2007, it's crazy. Let's get to it. Cash flow. Cash flow is revenue minus expenses and having profit left over at the end of the month. With your profit, you can use it to finance your lifestyle or even pay down debt. Do keep in mind that it's very important to cash flow so you have additional funds for any emergencies. Also, the bank will want to see that your property can cash flow and pay down any expenses in the event that you decide to pull out equity and expand your portfolio. So an example of cash flow is, let's just say you're generating $2,000 in rent from your high quality tenants. Now, let's assume the expenses are your mortgage, line of credit, maintenance, repairs, insurance, property tax, adding a little bit of vacancy involved, property management fees, and let's say everything comes out to about $1,800. So because we have $2,000 in revenue, we have $1,800 in expenses, you're cash flowing $200. That's what you want to see every month. Asset appreciation. As we listed earlier, real estate over time has proven to appreciate However, do keep in mind, depending on the cycle that you're in, there's no guarantee. So as your property is in continuing to increase in value over time, you're essentially building equity in which you can extract from your property and use to purchase other cash flowing assets. Number three, mortgage pay down. Now you might be saying to yourself, how can I win with real estate by paying down my mortgage other than not foreclosing on my home or ruining my credit? Well, as you continue to pay down your mortgage, you're essentially owning more of your property, which you're building up the equity, which you can extract and continue to purchase other cash flowing assets. Also, do keep in mind that in the beginning, you're gonna be paying down more interest than principal, and over time, that'll, that'll snowball and end up becoming the opposite, where you'll end up paying more principal than interest. Do keep in mind that with real estate, because you do have a mortgage, you're essentially receiving 80% of the funds from someone else and have only put in 20%. Considering the bank is 80% of whoever your lender is, that's phenomenal where most investments you'll have to put in 100% in order to get any of the investment. Number four, force appreciation. One thing I love about real estate is the amount of control you have over your investment that you can enhance it over time. So with real estate, you can purchase a distressed property, which is a property below market value, add value to it, by putting together some cosmetic renovations, enhancing the value within a short time frame, you can extract the equity and use that to purchase other cash flowing properties. Now, let's say that you decide to invest in stocks, bonds, mutual funds, ETFs, and cryptocurrencies. You only have the control to buy, hold, or sell. And now if you're a shareholder of a company, example, let's just say Apple, and the bulk of the shareholders decide to sell their investment, you have no control and accept the losses and either sell or hold on to your investment. Number five, tax advantages. As employees, we typically pay more than 20% of taxes and have very few ways that we can offset our taxes. However, as real estate investors, we have the ability to generate tax-free revenue by using expenses such as mortgage interest, property tax, insurance, repairs, maintenance, property management fees as a way to offset our taxes. Another powerful way to reduce or eliminate paying any taxes is through depreciation. The government understands that over time your property will endure wear and tear. So the government allows you to depreciate here in Canada 4% of the property value towards your taxes, which is another amazing way to offset it. So once again, as listed earlier, you pay zero or very little taxes. Number six, leverage. With real estate, you have the ability to collateralize your primary residence, extract equity as we listed earlier, and use that to purchase other cash flowing investment properties. Over time, as you're building equity in your investment properties, you can do the same thing as you did to your primary residence, which is extract the equity and purchase more and more investment properties. All in all, expanding on your wealth, building more income, building a legacy, and building a lifestyle you deserve by design. 
Hey guys, if you enjoy the content, click on the link below where you can access my blog where I go further in depth into the topic. Hit the subscribe button, hit the like button. Thanks so much for tuning in. Hope you enjoy the content. See you next time.